The section that we're doing now is dealing with arc length and area of sector. We put them together because they're very similar. They're both dealing with parts of a circle. For example, arc length is how far is the actual distance walking on the circle from A to B or from B to A. Yes, it's a 60 degree arc, but how far do we actually walk? And the other area of the sector, you know, it's a piece of a pie. How much in you know, square feet, square inches, square centimeters is that part of the pie? Now, they're also put together because they're solved the same way. It's all very similar. Um, you have to be able to solve proportions. The purport, and there's several ways you can write the proportion correctly, but there are also ways you can write it wrong. I tend to use just one way of writing it. And the way I use is that you write part, the number or variable for part of the circle, over all of the circle. And you do that on both sides of the proportion. But what happens is on the left, I tend to always write the degrees that it's uh, 70 degrees out of a whole circle. And the whole circle is 360 degrees. And then the other side is going to be you know, inches or centimeters or feet, you know, you know, distance thing. Here's where the two are different. For arc length, the whole circle is the circumference, 2 pi r. But for sector, the whole circle is area, which is pi r squared. That's the only difference you've got to remember. Everything else is the same. Part over all. Part over whole, if you want. So let's, have, let's do a problem. So we have, uh, we don't know how far from A to B. So we need to set up our proportion. And we know that we have 60 degrees of the circle. All of the circle is 360. And part is from A to B, which we're going to call x. And all of the circle is, now we're doing length here, so it's 2 pi r. And r in this case is 5. So we got 60 over 360. The degree symbols are going to cancel. Um, equals x over 10 pi which I just, you know, multiply 5 by 2. Now we need to cross multiply, sort of. Some people think it's easier to think of it as a cross multiply. Really, we just got to get x by itself. Um, so we need to multiply like that. Some people want to think about it as cross multiplying and do 360 up to x, but we're just going to have to undo that later on because I don't want anything with the x. So there's no sense in doing it now. So I can think about it as cross multiply, but also think smart. Do I really want to take the 360 up to x and then just bring it back down? It's OK if you do. It's just an extra step. I tend not to. So we've got what is here, 10 pi, and we're going to bring it up. So we're going to have 10 pi times 60 divided by 360. So. If you can multiply that in the calculator, that's how you get it solved. 10 times pi times 60 divided by 360. You should be able to do that. Let's try this one. 7 inches. Oh, I don't even have it labeled. My gosh. You know, how far from A to B? Well, again, part of a circle. I've got 130 degrees. The whole circle is 360. I want to know how far from A to B, so that's x. The whole circle is 2 pi r, 2 pi 7. So 130 over 360, x over 14 pi. Uh, some people just, like I said, some people like thinking about it cross multiply. Some people just want to think about it as getting x by itself. So to get x by itself, we're going to multiply by 14 pi. It's the same thing we did before. We just wrote it differently. You know, we just wrote it with an arrow saying what we were going to do. It's really the same thing. So then you do 14 times pi times 130. Divide that by 360. And that is x. That is the distance from A to B. 
on the circle. Not chord AB, but the distance on the circle. All right. Let's see, we know that 22 is from A to B. That 22 is written right next to the arc, so we know it is the distance from A to B. And we know our radius is 8. Oh, they don't tell us the angle. So I guess our job is to figure out the angle. All right, so fraction again, proportion, part of the circle over 360 equals part of the circle, 22, over all the circle, which is 2 pi r, 8. All right, so x over 360 equals 22 over 16 pi. Uh, again, cross multiply. But again, do we really want to bring the 16 pi up? No, we don't, because we just have to take it down later. Do we want to take the 360 up? Definitely. X equals 22 times 360. That's just a little random dot there. Over 16 pi. Now, some of you are going to have trouble with this one because there's actually two things in the denominator, 16 and a pi. You've got to figure out the best way for you to deal with that. I tend to divide by 16 and then divide by pi. So 22 times 360 equals some number, divide by 16, equals some number, divide by pi, equals, and I come up with 157.56 degrees. Now, you might come up with something slightly different, like 158.21 or 157.32. I used a pi button on my calculator. You might be using 3.14. Remember, that's an approximation for pi, not actually pi. Here's the other thing. How many decimal places does my calculator do pi, and how many decimal places does your calculator do pi might be different. But as long as you're very, very close. Now, if I got 157.56 and you got 175, something's wrong with yours, not mine. All right, so let's try another one. They give us the angle and they give us the arc. They give us x, y. They give us, because it's right next to it. So they're telling us that. So pretty much the only thing we don't know is all the way around a circle, actually the circumference. We know 130 out of 360. We know it's 10 meters out of, I don't know what, 2 pi r. So we've got to find the circumference. So one thing they don't go. They might ask us to find the radius, but we've got to find the circumference first. So, All right, do we want to cross multiply? Definitely. We don't like having variables in the denominator. So you definitely want to bring that up. You also want to bring the 360 up. So we have 2 pi r times 130 equals 10 over 360. Now what? Well, we want to find circumference, which is 2 pi r. So we kind of just treat 2 pi r as x. That's our variable. All right, so what's on the same side as x? Well, 130 is. How do you get rid of 130? Divide. Now, you got to be careful how you're going to write this and how you're going to do it. You want to do 10 over 360 and have it also being over 130. You need that 130 to be in the bottom over here and the bottom over here. A couple different ways to write it. You could just literally put it in the bottom like that. Kind of like with a, with a 1 on top. So x equals 10 divided by, why is my 360, oh, why is my 360 in the bottom? Didn't we cross multiply? 360 should have gone up top. Why didn't you stop me? 10 times 360. Because it was in the bottom here, so it's got to be in the top on the other side. Divided by 130. 
There we go. So 10 times 360, 10 times 360 divided by 130 is 27.69 meters. It's bigger than 10, so that's good because 10 was only part way around the circle. 27 is all the way around the circle. So again, we've got this nice little proportion. 360 is always going to be in one spot. 360, not 36. Always in one spot. So there are three places for x to go. Find part of the degrees. Find how many meters it is around part of the circle. Find how many meters it is around all of the circle. Those are the possibilities.